Christopher Bale pulls off his second walk-off win this season to solidify his spot into the Final Four next week at Phoenix. And we got to talk about this epic, memorable moment by Ross Chastain at the end of this race. Let's talk about NASCAR in Martinsville. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR at the half mile of mayhem, the paperclip. It is Martinsville. It was exciting. It was crazy. I want to start out by saying I was in attendance for the Martinsville race today, so I am still uh, in Virginia right now. I've not made it back to the Dirty Air Studios uh, in North Carolina, so uh, hopefully we'll be back there tomorrow. Uh, but I am still in Virginia, so I do apologize in advance for the the kind of maybe the not so great lighting, not maybe maybe not as pleasing to the eye as uh, it usually is. But either way, we have a fantastic Martinsville race to talk about. It was insane. Uh, before I talk about Ross Chastain's move, which is obviously going to be the big topic, everyone's talking about Ross Chastain's move. I just saw it on the local news here in Virginia. I, I heard it on the football game tonight. That is what everybody is talking about. But I do want to talk about. Christopher Bell's way, the way he run uh, back up through the field to win this race. I don't want this Ross Chastain move to overshadow the impressive things Christopher Bell uh, did today. So I do want to mention that. Let's talk about Christopher Bell. Obviously the winner today. Uh, two walk-off wins for Christopher Bell. We talk about uh, in this playoff system format, walk-off wins, kind of a new phrase that Christopher Bell's created. Um, three weeks ago, Charlotte Road Course, Christopher Bell needed to win the race to get into the next round of the playoffs. He goes up there and wins the race in an epic uh, charge to the lead, kind of like he did today. Christopher Bell needed the win today uh, after the wreck in Las Vegas last week, a not-so-great run in Miami, or uh, two weeks ago in Las Vegas getting involved in the wreck, and then a not-so-great uh, race in Miami. And then, of course, this week at Martinsville was able to get the win. So two walk-off wins for Christopher Bell. He was the fastest car all day. The only other car that might have been a bit faster than Christopher Bell was Denny Hamlin. But Denny Hamlin had so many pit road problems, so many issues on pit road, he didn't have a chance to go back up to the field and win this race. But Christopher Bell, what he did at the end was impressive. With 25 laps to go, we had a restart, and Christopher Bell had a bad pit stop on the caution before and restarted in sixth. All day long, it was extremely uncommon to pass. It was rare to see passes up front throughout the field. You saw them. You saw guys bump the bump people out of the way, you know, get a few positions, but it took a while. It took multiple laps. Christopher Bell, what he did today, I think was very impressive. He was able to go through multiple guys. He was able to pass William Byron, who's in the playoffs. He was able to go through him. He was able to go through Kyle Larson. He was able to go through Brad Keselowski, who actually ended up getting disqualified after this race. He was able to go through all those guys who had four fresh Goodyear tires. And, of course, Cole Custer and the 14 car uh, was able to uh, stay out front. They were able to stay on older tires. They were going to try to stay out front, try to push it, see if they could get it done. Chris Busher, uh, that is, and Cole Custer teammates, uh, two Stuart Haas racing teammates. Uh, but Christopher Bell just blew right by those guys. I mean, it was it was the hardest part was getting by Kyle Larson. I knew the second that Christopher Bell got past Kyle Larson, it was going to be tough to hold off Christopher Bell charging through the field. And it was, you see here, Christopher Bell pulls off a, a aggressive move. You had to bump him to get get through him, but just didn't really stand a chance for, for the 14 car. He got out the way pretty quick there. He kind of knew it was over at that point with five laps to go. Uh, and got out Christopher Bell's way, and Christopher Bell, Christopher Bell ultimately won the race. So a great win for him. He is in the championship four next week with four career wins, three of those coming this season. New Hampshire, a shorter racetrack. The Roval, a road course racetrack, definitely kind of different, but low speed. And then, of course, Martinsville, and then we go to Phoenix next week, which might kind of favor those two. So definitely consider Christopher Bell a championship threat as he is in the championship race. But let's talk about the big story now. Let's talk about the number one story of the day, Ross Chastain's epic move to get into the championship race. You're looking at it here, just insane. Just it just rides the wall from what I understand. It doesn't even look real. I mean, it looks like it looks like I, that is real time. That is not sped up. That is not a sped up version of the video. That is real time. Blows past everybody. Uh, there's an onboard cam of this as well. Just absolutely insane what Ross Chastain was able to do there. I've never seen that before. I used to do that on a video game when I was a kid. I didn't think it was actually physically possible to do, but I guess it is, uh, especially on the final lap. So. Epic move by Ross Chastain. I was in the grandstands. The, the crowd went crazy when they did it. When they re-showed it on the, on the big TV screen, on the big intercom, 
Everybody went insane. It was wild. He got cheered like crazy for that move, and it's been the talk of the town. I mean, like I said, it's been on the news. It's It was the whole post-race show, essentially. Uh, it, it's all you can talk about. It was such an impressive move, uh, and he planned it out and, and, and executed it so perfectly that it's wild. He, From what I understand... Uh, they were using the third and fourth gear all day long. He went all the way up into fifth gear on the back straightaway and just kept it full throttle going all the way around. He executed it perfectly, knew it. He planned it. He got straight up uh, against that wall and just gutted it. It's kind of like what Kyle Larson did uh, last year at Darlington, but like on steroids compared to that. Absolutely insane. Now, whether you can argue whether NASCAR needs to make a rule against it, I don't know. I don't know if there is a rule you can make against it. I don't know if we'll see this. I don't think we're going to see this at every racetrack every week whatsoever. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever see it again. Uh, then if we do, obviously, then maybe a rule could be put in place. But, you know, obviously what, what Chastain did was completely legal. And Chastain always tends to be that guy, I don't want to say desperation moves, but he finds a way. I go back to the, the Indianapolis road course race when I disagreed with NASCAR when they made the call to penalize him for it. He took the, the, the penalty road, the penalty route around the racetrack and was able to come out in the lead after taking the penalty route at full speed. Uh, he didn't break the rules, I don't think, but that's a whole story for another time. But just insane what Ross Chastain is able to do is just trying to find a way like he did at the Indy Road Course back in the summertime and like he did today at Martinsville. He did find a way and he's in the championship for next week. Um, I do want to talk about the other uh, championship for Ross Chastain, Christopher Bell, obviously both of those guys impressively getting in. Joey Logano, didn't really see a whole lot of them today. Had a quiet day today. Finished in the sixth position. He obviously is guaranteed in with his win uh, a couple of weeks ago at Las Vegas. And then, of course, Chase Elliott, who went in this round with, I think, 30-something points to the green, only makes it in by four points. It's been a rough round of eight for Chase Elliott. Barely making it in with a 10th place finish today, but getting some stage points early on definitely helped him out uh, at the beginning of this race. So uh, Chase Elliott makes it. But he's got to find some speed. He's got to find some speed at, at these types of racetracks if he wants to win the championship next week at Phoenix. He's been the hottest driver all summer long. It would be a darn shame if Chase Elliott, the championship favorite all year, five wins this season, winning at all sorts of different racetracks, has been in the mix to win at almost every racetrack the last few weeks, has been on a bit of a slump. It'd be disappointing if he had a bad week next week at Phoenix. It'd be disappointing for that team if they did not come out the 2022 NASCAR championship. So let's go through, I talked about the championship four. I wanted to, to talk about all the craziness that happened today at Martinsville. Let's talk about the guys who didn't make it. Denny Hamlin, two points out after Ross Chastain made that epic move. Those two are battling all day. Those two have been battling all year long, which just made this moment much more crazier. But Denny Hamlin's eliminated, and he is still arguably going to be one of the best drivers without a championship going into 2023, and we'll see how far... That continues. Ryan Blaney obviously needed to win the race, couldn't get it done, could not get up there and get the win. He was fast. He was in the top 10 most of the day. Uh, actually ended up finishing third, but was an, unable to get up there and get the win. William Byron, another one of those guys, really needed to win the race, but just wasn't in position, wasn't able to get up there and get the win. Uh, with the way, like I said, passing was so uncommon, it was going to be diff difficult for him to get up there, and he just couldn't pull it off. And then Chase Briscoe obviously tried to get the win. He was leading with six laps to go on older tires, but you got Christopher Bell coming through with the fastest race car of the day on fresh four Goodyear tires. Didn't stand a chance. Uh, unfortunately, he was knocked out of the way there, like I showed you. Uh, so his season does end there. But still uh, still an impressive season for Chase Briscoe, nonetheless. I mean, making it all the way uh, this far into the playoffs is not a bad season. Uh, so let's go through the top ten just real quick. Like I said, Christopher Bell won. Kyle Larson had a decent day, had a fast day. He was kind of right behind Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson there. Ryan Blaney ended up finishing third in the playoffs. Ross Chastain with his crazy move made it all the way up to fourth. Now, I do want to mention uh, Brad Kozlowski did cross the finish line in front of Ross Chastain, but everybody will move up one position because Brad Kozlowski was disqualified. He was DQ'd at the end of this race, so uh, that is unfortunate for him. Denny Hamlin. Okay, I didn't talk about this when I talked about him in the playoffs, but let's talk about how bad Denny Hamlin's pit crew was today. Something's going on. It's disappointing. He's had pit road problems all year, but this time it was not penalties and it was not his fault. They were just slower pit stop. This is Kyle Busch's pit crew who's been faster than Denny Hamlin's all year until they swapped. What's going on? Is the crew chief training some body a little bit different? Are they doing things differently than the 18 was? Was was Ben Bay Shore uh, and, and Denny Hamlin's crew chief doing something a little bit differently? I don't know. 
I don't know that at all, but something definitely needs to be addressed. It's it's weird how Denny Hamlin's crew is always a little bit slower than Kyle Busch's crew, and it cost him big time today. He was leading this race, lost multiple spots on pit road. We know how valuable track position was in this race, the whole race. Denny Hamlin could have won this race. He could have battled out with his teammate. I think Christopher Bell was faster, but Denny Hamlin definitely should have been higher up than fifth. Fifth is very disappointing when you had a top two race car, maybe even a winning race car, if he had been able to battle a, a Christopher Bell there at the end of it. So disappointing finish for sure for Denny Hamlin. Got to fix those pit road problems. I've been saying it all year. It's cost him a lot. This time it cost him a championship for appearance and potentially a championship. Joey Logano, obviously, like I said, already in the championship four, got a sixth place finish. William Byron just didn't have the speed all day, really. Started out up front, faded just a little bit, finished seventh. Uh, Bubba Wallace, not a bad finish for him, finishing in the top 10 once again. Like I said, uh, he's continuing to improve, finishing the top 10 way more. Um, Chase Briscoe on the older tires just faded all the way back to ninth. I didn't know he actually faded that far back. So he, so he lost nine spots there at the end of this race. Um, in those last five laps. So yeah, fresher tires definitely meant something today. We saw the tire wear build up on the racetrack. You could see the luck, the rubber laying in. I was there in person, like I said, you could see, and you could probably see it on TV too. You could see the rubber laying in on the racetrack as it continued to go around. Then of course, Chase Elliott rounds out the top 10. Another driver I do want to mention is Kyle Busch, my guy. I'm wearing a Kyle Busch hat. I have to talk about him. It's unfortunate, uh, unfortunate that Kyle Busch has not finished in the top 20, I think, uh, in any race I've been to this season. Kyle Busch's worst year ever continues. But what what I don't understand, and I'm not going to be a conspiracy theorist. I'm not going to say that their JGR is sabotaging him or TRD is sabotaging Kyle Busch. But I just think it's suspicious that Christopher Bell won this race in a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. Denny Hamlin was super fast in a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. Truex, maybe not that fast, but still top 20 car. And Kyle Busch is getting passed by J.J. Yaley and Cody Ware. That was, in, that was insane. And there was one point, I mean, every time I looked at Kyle Busch's car coming out of the turn, he looked like he was about to wreck the thing. I saw where they made a couple of wedge adjustments. They tried to fix the car up best they could. That thing was literally junk. He was getting passed by guys. He was getting knocked out of the way for second to last place. Kyle Busch was the slowest car on the racetrack at the at least the first half of the race today. That is disappointing, and I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I'm not saying I'm not the conspiracy theorist type. I'm not saying he's being sabotaged. It's just weird to me that Christopher Bell won the race and Kyle Busch can't even run in the top 30. But that's it. That's all there is to talk about after Martinsville, an impressive race. I had a great time at the race. It was jam-packed crowd. Uh, traffic was good getting in and out. The concessions were cool. We actually had Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi worked great at the race. Uh, so it was cool being at Martinsville this weekend. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked the video. Tune in next week after the NASCAR Championship Race Review in Phoenix. And, of course, about Kyle Busch not finishing in the top 20 again and having another bad day. Let's get rowdy.